Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Real Housewives. Hey y'all, hey. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. Hello, I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura, and we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even housewives fighting literally over nothing. We love to watch, and we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching The Real Housewives Housewives of Potomac, season eight of Bravo's hit reality show. Yes. We are so excited today. We have such, such a special episode and guest here for y'all. But before we get into it, please make sure you give Sisters Watch five stars wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, go subscribe to our YouTube channel, and go follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're there. So go support us all at Sisters You Watch and check out our website. We have merch now. Okay, Shelby, we have the most amazing guests here. We have Sharice Jackson Jordan here with us today from the Real Housewives of Potomac and Conversations in the Champagne Room podcast. Yay! Uh, (laughs) Welcome, Sharice. Thanks for having me. As fans of Potomac, we've been watching from the beginning. You are an icon, you know, the real Grand Dame of Potomac, if I can say it. So. (laughs) It's actually not a real title, though. Not really in Potomac, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, the really grand people in Potomac have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are not on the show. <laughs> I actually met you at the podcast movement conference a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I fangirled a little bit, did get a photo, sent it to my family. We were very excited and just amazing that we are now here today recording with you. Truly, like, pinch me. <laughs> and we'd love for you to, like, introduce yourself to our audience. Tell them about your podcast. We've listened and are big fans. Well, I'm Cherise, and everyone knows I love champagne. So created a champagne room in my house, and it was, like, my little my little baby project. And I thought of it because I, I do. I drink champagne, unfortunately, regularly. And so I'm like, well, that's my little, you know, pastime. So why not have a room for it? So I built a champagne room, but then I sold my house. So, and of course, a lot of it, I was able to take the furniture, but like the, I had this custom chandelier done. I had to leave that, the refrigeration, the shelving. So I was like, I'm so bad. But anyway, so the, I've been wanting to do a podcast for like ever and so, of course, you know, I, well, initially when I was going to do it, I wanted a co-host. And so I had this one co-host. It didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Then I had this guy that I was going to do it with. But then he got a big contract with the major network. So he and I, he wasn't available to do it. And then I, I just felt like I needed a co-host. And then I signed up with this network, the Alive Podcast Network. And they were like, Sharice, you could do it on your own. You don't need a co-host. And I'm like, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yes. I decided to just invite friends week to week and talk about um, like the struggles we've gone through. Because Lord knows I've been through a lot. So, mm-hmm. you know, you talk about how you can take your struggles and turn them into positives. And how they made you stronger or wiser or the amazing person who you are today. So basically, it's like turning lemons into lemonade. So it's fun. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. We still can't believe it. We're so honored to have you on the pod. And yes, we both have been listening. And your conversations are so inspiring, especially right as Black women. You know, you're someone who has been through a lot and has been so resilient. So it's just really inspiring to, you know, hear about your story. Um, So yeah, go check out the podcast. It's really great. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, we have a very special segment for you, Sharice. It's called the Bravo Breakdown, okay? And here we're just going to hit you with some rapid fire questions about the Bravo-verse, right? And you got to give us what, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, okay? So first, we're going to talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You, We're not sure if you're okay. watching this, but there's been some cast shakeups, right? Candy, the longest-running housewife, she's gone. Marlo, Sanya are also leaving and Portia's returning. Like what, do you have any thoughts on this cast, the new season that's coming up? Actually, I don't, but (laughs) I think it's interesting. 
I think it's interesting. It's an interesting shakeup. I thought it's interesting that, you know, they brought Portia, she's with Simon, and now she's not with Simon. Right. So it's like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, but it, there's still drama going on with Portia and Simon. So maybe that will parlay onto the show. So it's interesting. I, I like um, Sonia, actually, mm -hmm. because of the fact that she was a full package. You know, she was a wife. She is a wife. She has a family, you know, she has her extended family as part of her, her network that's helping her. Um, and she's doing a lot of great things. So I'm like, it just seems to me sometimes when you get people like that, <clears throat> um, that's not what they really want, you know? <laughs> like, they want the sort of low key love and hip hop. Ooh. So. <laughs> Facts are facts. You're right. You're right. It's unfortunate sometimes because I feel that as a black woman, you know, when I was asked to be a part of Potomac, for example, the thought was it was going to be like a black version of Beverly Hills. Mm. Well, we know that we're not working though, right? So <laughs> it's like, I think when they think of black women, they just can't correlate class and elegance mm. and sophistication and when you do bring that, you're boring. That's what I wanted to see, that like black excellence. Yeah. And to your point, we rarely get to see that on reality TV. Yeah. I mean, when we started, actually, it was, you know, fun shade. You know, it wasn't crazy. You know, mm -hmm. the next thing you know, people are being dragged. And I mean, it's just, even when I came back, it was just like a little different for me. It wasn't the element that I left. And yeah. I was just like, oh my God, what's going on here? It was, you know, at one point I just didn't even feel safe because, I, you know, you saw the rumble. <laughs> so it's like, what's next? Someone's going to come here with a gun? Like, I guess now maybe they're going to try to tone it down. So they say, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Thank you for that take. Yeah. We're hoping for the best. <laughs> yeah. We're prepared for the worst. <laughs> That right. part, though. <laughs> I can't. So you've t you told us that you like Vanderpump Rules and you're watching. What are your thoughts on this new season? Ariana with her new boyfriend, Tom Sandoval kind of reeling from the whole drama. What do you think? I thought the whole thing with Sandoval and all that stuff was bananas. Um, I thought it was even crazier that they come into the season and he's like heartbroken and the girl just like disappeared on him and kicked him to the curb. <laughs> and he was just like, almost like, what was me? I'm wanting a pity party mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, I didn't really like Ariana making people pick sides, mm -hmm. you know, him or her. Um, what he did was messed up, but I mean, they're all still friends. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I just wouldn't have, if I love you as a person and we all love each other as a collective and then something happens with me and another person, I don't expect you to now pick a side. Because it has nothing to do with you. Those people sleep around. So, <laughs> I mean, it's like... Like, I honestly am shocked yeah. at, like how they are all still yeah. friends you want to keep your job you have to be friends you mm -hmm. have to get you have to get over it and that's the crazy thing about reality tv because how you would normally respond in real life you know people would do certain things and you're like oh i'm done with that person but if you're going to coexist on a show that's based on friends you have to get over it and move mm -hmm. on we know you also watch summer house Mar martha's vineyard initially we weren't the biggest fans of season one but we've heard that it's gotten better like what are your thoughts on the series are you enjoying it i am and i think i enjoy it because i now know all of them mm -hmm. for the most part and so i just take joy in watching you know i, don't, I hate to use the term my babies because they're young adults but <laughs> um my babies <laughs> My Bravo babies, you know, just watching them do their thing. Um, and the thing is, when they filmed their first season, like, um, 
there, Martha's Vineyard, the first two weeks in August is when all the black people are there, you know, and all the events are going on. So when they filmed the first season, it wasn't during that time. So like they're on on, oh. on the vineyard and there's nothing happening. Mm. So that oh. was kind of boring. So when they filmed season two, it's during the high peak. Oh. So there were other activities to go to and di- different things. Mm. So that helps too. Yes, that's that makes so much more sense. And that's a helpful, yeah, it's a helpful nugget. And that could be why maybe season one didn't right. hit for me. Compared to the other ones, I think the requirements seem to be a little different. Mm-hmm. I do think there's typically a higher standard. And even I heard that the cast has been trying to petition for a reunion because they didn't get one for like season one and like other franchises have gotten one. And I was like, huh. Yeah. I'm like, why wouldn't Summer House Martha's Vineyard not get a reunion? They yeah. will have a reunion for two. Actually, like with the reunion too, sometimes when you're, um, as a viewer watching the show, because of editing, you miss a lot, you know? Mm. So the reunion kind of gives you an opportunity to clear things up that may have been misrepresented in a sense. Um, so, I mean, that's always good. But I like when, you know, you have the reunion confrontations. Those are fun. Sharice, do you have a oh, yeah. favorite Bravo celebrity of all time? Like someone who always makes you laugh or just someone in the Bravo verse that you really enjoy? Myself. I'm actually friends with Nini. Oh. And she is a hoot. <laughs> I mean, I remember the first time I hung out with her in Atlanta and I was with a lot of the Atlanta the Atlanta cast and the Married to Medicine cast. And it was hilarious. I'm like, there's no cameras, guys. What are you doing? But that's just who they are. And I was like, the thing about, like, I, I take from that experience was, like, in Potomac, you have characters for the most part. You have mm. people being characters, you know. Mm. Whereas in Atlanta, that's who they are. You know what I'm saying? So it's more authentic and it comes off more natural. Um, they are funny. All of them are funny, but Nene is hilarious. Um, she was here coming here a lot. I haven't seen her probably now in probably like maybe six months, I guess. But uh, we, we spent a lot of time together. She's freaking funny. Just not even trying to be funny. I even learned like, something about myself like she told me all of my personality was in a bottle of champagne i said really and at first i took offense to it but then he's right like because when i come around people generally like saying out when you're out i'm very quiet but once i gotta get on that second glass i a whole nother person arrives <laughs> Just, and i was like hey, you know what she has a point she has a point you know, so champagne lecheries is kind of even keel, mm-hmm. but shasha lecheries is a lot of fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> she was so good on Atlanta. Like, they, she needs to be back on my TV screen. Like, I need more Nini. I missed that whole uh, initial cast of Atlanta. Yes. Um, and even the, sec- the second season cast, you know, it's a good cast. Um, mm-hmm. I heard Phaedra might pop in this season that's the word on the curve Uh, (laughs) kind of gotten away from Atlanta like I used to be a diehard like I'll I'll just be real about it like I was a diehard and the last couple seasons I've been kind of I mean I watch it but I'm just not a diehard like the last few seasons haven't been as successful. So I guess it's good that they're shaking up the cast. I like a lot of them. Like, um, for example, Sheree, I met her for the first time at BravoCon. I love her. Like her personality is so amazing. Um, I love Cynthia. Yeah. I've, I've, met, I've met Cynthia years ago. So I went to her 50th birthday party. That's how long I, that's when I first met her. Wow. Um, great person and just a good person on and off the camera. Um, but other than that, I just, when I see people, all the other ones, I'm just like, hi, you know, hi, and that's it. <laughs> Give them a little hug and keep it moving. I also like um, Southern Charm. So good. We really like Southern Charm. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm addicted. When I went to BravoCon, like, it's so funny because of the other housewives, they didn't know the young people. I didn't do everything. I was like a little groupie. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And I'm like, oh, you got to tell me this. Tell me the truth about this. And I'm like, talking, talking, talking. And everyone was like, you watch these shows? I'm like, all the time. I'm like, literally, I don't even really watch Housewives. I'd rather watch Summer House, Winter House, Martha's Vineyard, mm-hmm. Southern Charm, all of them. And I, I haven't quite gotten into the valley yet. Um, mm-hmm. Have you watched that? A couple valley? episodes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten it yet, but it's a new show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give it time. Usually if they, the first season is always difficult. So, you know, you're getting to know one another. Um, you're figuring out what's going on. Just like when we did Potomac, we didn't know we were doing a housewife show. We just filmed, mm. you know? Wow. So then once you get the green light for the show, then you understand what show it's going to be. Because our show was initially going to either be in the Housewife franchise or the other one. You remember they had Ladies of London? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so they were going to put Potomac in that category. But then they changed their mind. I don't even know what happened to Ladies of London. And last question of our Bravo breakdown. Other than RHOP... What Bravo show would you like to go on? Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> I, mean, I thought you could be the mom or something. <laughs> like that sounds really great. Like you pop in for like a weekend, just hang out, check on everybody, try to resolve their problems. <laughs> yes. Let's talk through it, people. What, what show? Well, I'm from New Jersey. Oh, yeah, I know that you know, people like me in New Jersey, um, and they've been kind of integrating, integrating all the shows, but New Jersey hasn't gotten the memo yet. Um, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. There, are, there are a lot of black people in Jersey, so they should fix that. <laughs> but not on the show. Not on the show. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Not on that show. So they've integrated all the shows with other races, mm-hmm. yeah, except that one. That one hasn't, you know, it's all Italian women. There needs to be a change in formula, I think. Because people are tired of seeing Teresa and her sister-in-law, Melissa, fighting all the time. You know, after a while, it's like beating a dead horse, you know? So, like, season after season, it's the same thing. Like, okay, let's switch it up, people. Let's talk about RHOP a bit more. Hear a bit more about, like, how you got the group started. You know, we have the original, you know... OG here who helped start Potomac. So we have to talk about it. Yo, DC, Housewives of DC. Oh, yeah. So they had initially approached me for that show, but at the time we were moving to Philadelphia. And so they were trying to get me to like go back and forth. I'm like, who is doing that? Not me. So then when they, well, the, that season, I mean, that show only lasted one season. But then when they came back and they were looking to do another ensemble, you know, the came to me and I literally, I tried my hardest to cast that show in Potomac. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Potomac is not an easy place to cast in a sense because first of all, it's a new show. So the area is very conservative. Mm-hmm. So you talk about reality TV, the people here are like, uh, no, we don't want that here. Um, no, not interested. And you know, women who wanted to do it, their husbands wouldn't let them do mm-hmm. it, or did, you know, for business reasons. Yeah, I mean, Potomac is a very wealthy town. So if you're, when I say these people, they're uber wealthy, you know? So if you're uber wealthy, why are you doing a reality show? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it didn't work out too well. So I asked them, can I like go off the grid and go outside of Potomac? And they said, yeah. So I, first one I called was Giselle, um, you know, and then it just went from there. And so I personally wasn't going to do the show. Oh, and right. part of why I wasn't going to do it was because, you know, I had a rocky relationship mm-hmm. and I knew he didn't want to be a part of it. He wasn't going to take part in it. So I'm like, you know, that moves me out anyway. But I, I wasn't looking to do reality TV. And I, I, with the exception of just watching the show, you know, being from Jersey and watching New Jersey and being very proud of Housewives of New Jersey... I really never thought about being on the show, you know? Oh, so it was just like, you know, this isn't for me. Um, and then there was this one spot, somebody was, somebody that cast it pulled out. 
And they were like, Sharice, would you please reconsider? You're like the glue, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, since my marriage was going awry, I just thought, okay, maybe I will do it. But it was the worst thing to do Mm -hmm. for me at that time because it was, you know, I was going through a divorce, you know, and I just felt like the interest was more, um, they're more into like, this, to sensationalize things, you know, yeah. like, I guess I was supposed to like dog out my ex-husband or, you know, whatever. I wasn't going to do that. I have two kids that are also going through divorce. So when I was filming, I wasn't expecting it to be the way it was in terms of the focus. Cause they told me I could talk about it when I was ready. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, they created me getting a divorce when I wasn't even getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. And cause at that time I was, I wanted my marriage to work. I didn't want a divorce. Yeah. And so now it's like all the stuff, she's getting a divorce and, uh, and I was getting a divorce. And then it was like, you're not getting divorced fast enough. It was just horrible. Oh, like no. the support sucked. And, um, it just wasn't a good time. Like prior to doing this show, I had lost three siblings within two years. Mm So I had that on top of it, you know? So emotionally, I wasn't, I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't prepared for this chaos that happens on reality TV. And then I also really didn't have a producer. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm like, you got me in this thing. I have no direction. So the first two seasons, I was a housewife, but I didn't I didn't have anyone actually producing me. So I was just there. And I just felt like they really wasn't interested in me, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I was doing so many things and there was no interest in my real personal life. That's, you know, so which is, I don't know. I was very unhappy. Mm-hmm. And I came, it came, I think it kind of came across that I wasn't happy, um, you know, and then I became a friend, which I was like, okay, cool. Because you're not going to tell my story anyway. So as a friend, they yeah. don't focus on your personal story. So I'm like, fine. I'm still getting paid the same thing everybody else is getting paid. Um, and you don't have to focus on my personal story. So wonderful. <laughs> and that didn't work. I think, I don't know. I, I think that being a friend was supposed to make me want to be like, oh, I'm getting that champagne glass back. You know, but it didn't do that for me. And then season seven, minding my own business and my little peace bubble, and here they come. And I was like, I'm just enjoying my peace right now. I don't know if I want to do this. They were like, you know, she's this, that, the other, blah, blah, blah. And so I agreed to do it. And then it looked like I'm sweating Karen Huber of all people. So I'm just like, okay, uh, this is not my life. So then it just wasn't what I was told it was going to be. So then season eight, I didn't even want to come back. I said, I don't know why y'all want me to come back because what you promised didn't happen. And then it was like, oh no, Um, well, this season is going to be so different. It's going to be different. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to do that. I was able to do nothing. So it was just a waste of time. The input that I would give, they weren't receiving it like, I was thinking I was going to bring some class back to the show. At least that's what I was told. Um, yes. and I, like, we need it. I wanted us to go to the Kentucky Derby last year, right? So I oh, have connections so in Kentucky. I'm working on this trip, getting everything together. And then they're like, oh, we're going to go to Texas. What? So you'd rather go <laughs> to Chicken Chick Bingo Make, than to go it. to the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> like... I just felt like I didn't have a place. And I told them, I said, mm. you know, clearly I'm not the one and I'm okay with not being that person because what you want, I'm never going to be, you know, mm. period. Ugh. Nor do I want to be that. Yeah. That that's part. great that you chose yourself. You're like, this is not for me. Y'all are playing me. And like you said, why are we, why are we in Texas? Like, let's go to the Tucky Derby have our big hats, right. have a nice little cocktail. Like, what are we doing? And they didn't even Such go to Houston. They went to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with Austin, because it's beautiful. But Houston, <laughs> H-Town, come on. Like, right? 
what would be your ideal role with Potomac? My ideal role is to just be happy. Mm. And I don't want to be disrespected. And I felt very disrespected again and again and again. Season seven, um, they wanted me to get into it with Wendy. I didn't come here for that. (laughs) It's like, why am I doing that exactly? Um, No, I'm not. You you want me to come? The, The group was dismantled. No one liked each other. Like, literally, everyone's hating each other. I thought my job was to bring the group back together, which I was never given that opportunity. But mm-hmm. if I'm coming to bring the group back together, why am I exactly going to fight with Wendy? Yeah. Like, it's contradicting. There was already enough drama going on on the show. Like, you had NECA and Wendy with their African stuff. Mm-hmm. And you had... Um, who else is fighting? Oh, Candace and Giselle and, and Robin. Robin versus Candace. And, it was just too much. I think the role is not a part of it. Mm. It's unfortunate because I used to feel like this is my baby, you know? know? And so when I came back, that was the mindset, which means this is your baby, you know? But now when I look at it, I'm like, nah, that's not your baby, honey. That's somebody yeah. else's baby. So... <laughs> We gonna leave that baby right there. <laughs> baby needs a new mom. Put it right there on the police station. I <laughs> sit it on the on the steps of the police station. <laughs> okay. Job at the firehouse, not mine anymore. Yes. So, did you have like a least favorite moment from the season? A favorite moment watching back? I don't have any favorite moments. I'm gonna say my least favorite moment was that fight. Mm. Yeah. That was my least favorite moment. I was like literally shook. During the altercation, like, can you take us back? Like, what was it like being in that moment? You know, it was surreal. Um, Because you're like, is this really happening? You know? And then, you know, like, I see Candace grab a bottle and then I might, you know, I go in mommy mode. So I'm like, oh, I grab the bottle and then I'm holding on her and break my toe in the process. I had a broken toe from that. It still hasn't oh healed properly. Um, <laughs> like, Battle wounds. It was so unbelievable. What was they were saying at the reunion about how the fight went down? Is that actually accurate? Did it seem like Deborah was like ready to start something? Because that's what everyone was saying. And right, like we couldn't really see that. I think Deborah did come kind of amped up. Mm. Okay. You know? And... Unfortunately, Candace, I love her to death. But something Candace, you know, she got the that tongue, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, you know, so the next thing I know, the girl is like, um, say it to my face. And it went left after that. It was mm-hmm. just you know, I don't know what was being said. I don't you know, I don't know I, I, I just think that the girl was came in with a mission, when production invites you, they mic you up. So she wasn't mic'd up or anything. She was just there like all the other people. Mm -hmm. She wasn't part of the cast for that day. And so we're literally filming and we're like, say it's like on a stage and there's like cameras in front of us and they're filming the conversation. And like in front of me, there's the bucket with the champagne and there's some food or whatever. And they kept walk her and the other girl kept walking across. I'm like, do they not see we're filming here? You know, like pouring themselves some champagne. Mind you, there's bars on both sides of the room. Like they could have gone there, but they kept coming like, so it's like almost like trying to be on camera. And so, and my, I'm looking at production, like what's going on here? You know, we're filming. Mm-hmm. And so then the girls, the two girls are sitting where we're sitting. And I'm looking and I'm like, they're not part of the, the cast. They're not mic'd up. So, you know, as soon as those cameras went down, that's when everything went just wow. crazy. Whatever happened between her and Kay, Kay was like Muhammad Ali, honey. She started swing. She's like a professional fighter. The way that that girl was hitting her, mm. I was like, whoa. And I'm like, holding on to Candace. She should be a professional fighter. She's good. I mean, <laughs> she could kick my behind any day. Um, <laughs> And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> but then the other girl, 
Ashley's other girlfriend grabbed Kay by the hair and pulled her down. And that's how the other girl, Deborah, ends up getting the advantage. I mean, she looked like a crazy woman. Like, the way she was, she was hitting her. And I'm like, oh, my God, she looked like she was deranged or something. Like, And I'm like, Candace is, like, doing all this stuff. I'm holding out of Candace. I'm like, she don't want this crazy lady. Like, mm. <laughs> this crazy lady went away. Stay away. Fuck why. I'm like. Like you said, giving love and hip hop. Like I yeah. saw the video, right? That TMZ posted. I was like, "What?" Definitely not Beverly Hills. No, <laughs> not giving black Beverly Hills. That's for sure. <laughs> More like Compton. Yeah, I know. It's like Crenshaw, Compton. Sounds <laughs> like Compton. <laughs> I can't. I want to see that show, The Real Housewives of Compton. That sounds good. Oh, that's a good one. I watched that. <laughs> To get the reputation of colorism um, does not exist. These are actually my friends, mm -hmm. you know, and I actually truly love them, even Karen, even though she hates me. Um, but I actually love them. And, you know, when your friend is going through something, you kind of go through it too. At least I do, because I'm, I'm a cancer. That's my sign. Mm -hmm. And we're emotional people. I'm sort of like an empath. So I feel feelings and all of that. So... Well, my friends are getting death threats and stuff like that. I mean, Oof. that's what we're here in this place. Like, why? It's a TV show, you know? And so that that whole colorism thing just wasn't, it was very unpleasant um, because it wasn't conducive to what was really happening because all that colorism stuff happened on social media. It didn't happen on the show, you know? And unfortunately, people got... A reputation of being colorist and they're not you know it was just just not a good thing it, it just it was very disappointing yeah I really think the colorism conversation plagued so much of the reunion specifically and you can kind of see how that affected all those dynamics right we learned from the reunion that Last year's conversation about colorism affected Robin and Candace's relationship. We didn't learn that until the reunion. So it, it gave a lot of light right. into why there was so much tension to see like Giselle getting death threats, right? About her and her family and for them to get that label of colorist was just really disturbing. Right. It's like, we don't need that. There's already so much division within our community. Right. And now we're talking about this on Bravo. Like, why are we doing right. this? Ugh. And it's just, it's not even the platform for it. And in the season, I said, okay, my girlfriend wrote this book about Black women changing the world. And let's do some, a sit down with her and talk this thing out, you know, and repair some damaged friendships and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at first they're like, oh, that sounds good, Cherise. Okay. A month goes by. I'm like, okay, my friend April, she's ready to roll. When we gonna, it needs to be had. Okay. Well, mm, no, didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I thought you guys want this to repair, you know? And I, I thought that for the perspective of April Ryan, you know, White House correspondent, she has these books, you know, it, it just would, was a good look. Yes. And it was just no desire for it, you know? I'm like, okay. You know, first you don't want to go to the Derby. Now I can't bring peace. <laughs> why, why am I here exactly? <laughs> What changes do you think need to be made for the cast, the production? Like, what needs to happen for the franchise to get back? First, I think people need to get out of their own way. Um, everybody wants to be a star, you know, and, you know, they kind of get big headed over it and don't. It's a job. Okay. This is mm -hmm. your job. So when you work in corporate America, there's a certain responsibility. You go to work, you get paid because you work. For some reason, when you do reality TV, you get these people, now they're, you know, smelling themselves and they don't want to cooperate and they don't want to do what their job is requiring them to do. So then you end up with all these big heads and the show ends up like it does. <laughs> so we do have some changes coming to the cast, right? Candace is leaving, Robin is leaving. Um, and those two, you know... Candace was the source of some of, you know, the really broken relationships on the cast. So maybe that will help kind of mend fences. Do you think that the ladies can, you know, work through, 
you know, the past relationships and actually become friends again. Because it didn't seem like that was possible this past season. I think at this juncture, they probably realize they have to. Mm. That's real. I think that even though they were told before, I don't think they believed it because everybody's a star. But then when they saw that people were actually, it, it was shown that anyone could be replaced. So, you know, like I said, hopefully people just get out of their own way and, and just do your job. When we first started, we were all friends. You know, when you start bringing people who are from here, there, and everywhere like they have, there's no emotional connection to the person. Like, like when I say I care about these people, and when you don't have the emotional connection and you're just about trying to be a star, because most, I mean, let's be honest, most people that do these shows, most, they want the fame. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Really and they're fame whores. You know what I'm saying? And so you're doing this show and you want to be, you want to be the big girl, you know? So you don't care about bringing down somebody because there's no emotional attachment to the person. They're really not your friend, they're your TV friend. You have to do the job in a sense of uh, being shady and uncovering things and but it was, there's a way to do it, you know, mm-hmm. where it's, it's it's fun, it's funny, and it's not, like, in the gutter, yeah. you know? And I just think that that's what happened. It went to the gutter. Mm-hmm. It just got so low. It's like, how low can you go? They're, like, saying hello to Satan. It's just, like, crazy. Be closer <laughs> to God, okay? <laughs> right? Yeah. We're talking about witches and Satan. It's too much. That's hard. But I feel what happens is you get a group of people and some of them kind of sell their soul. Like, for real, we'll do no. anything to to be relevant on the show. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they don't care. Like, be a whore or whatever they got to be to be relevant. You know, because that's... And they, they tell themselves, that's what people want. No, nobody wants you to be a hoe. <laughs> like, what, who, we didn't ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you navigate balance between, like, authenticity and maintaining privacy on reality TV. Like there was this debate this past season, the past few about like Robin and how much she talked about Juan and the troubles. Like, what are your thoughts on like that balance of like being authentic and maintaining privacy? Now, I don't gamble, but if I were a betting woman, I would venture to say that everybody on that cast has stuff that they haven't shared. I think you're Unless right. you found out about it, okay? <laughs> I don't really think if that happened in any of their lives, mm-hmm. they would have came and said, oh, by the way, this girl is saying she yeah. was with my husband in a hotel. None of them would have done that. Completely Nobody. Right. I mean, you got a bunch of people on that show that lie all the time, 24-7, okay? And they don't even call out the lies. Mm-hmm. They, they know they're lying, and they let them lie. So... Um, Robin, in her case, people were like, oh, she's not being real. One thing I will say, I've known Robin the longest out of everyone on that cast. Robin is the realest person on the cast. Wow. And for people to try to mm-hmm. make her like, oh, she's this person who's delusional or in denial mm-hmm. or whatever. We all deal with stuff in our relationships. And it doesn't mean that she's in denial. Robin is, I'll tell you one thing, Robin's happy. Oh, you know, that's amazing. so that's good. she's happy, and the people who are talking about how she should do or what she should do are miserable. I think it's unfair mm-hmm. to expect her to just, you know, what, what was she supposed to do? Come on there and be like, oh, wants a, a, a hoe. <laughs> like, you know, I know he did it. You know, is that what you wanted? I mean, that wasn't her truth, mm-hmm. you know? You know, everyone wanted to write her narrative and she, she lives her narrative. Mm. And if people wanted to believe what she was saying, that's on them. At the end of the day, it didn't matter because Robin is, is still with her husband. She still has her family intact and she's happy. And of course, people are going to want, in order for a want, they want the story to be salacious. They don't want to hear anything good. They don't want you to see that Juan Dixon is a great father. They don't, you don't see that page in the narrative. All you're going to hear about is Juan allegedly doing whatever he's doing, mm-hmm. you know, that 
the thing he's doing, his wife doesn't seem to be worried about, you know, but we're going to make it a story because it's salacious, you know, but you don't want to focus on the positive things that that's going on in his life. So this segment is called Red Flag, Green Flag, one, two, three. So Sharice, Shelby and I will ask you some hot questions, whether something is a red flag, whether something's a green flag. You got to give us your, your opinion, your hot take, okay? Okay. Okay, perfect. First, is it a red flag to not welcome a fellow cast member? So kind of like the Wendy and NECA situation, like production approached her being like, hey, can you bring this new person in? And she was like, no, I don't want to do that. It's definitely a red flag. Um, <laughs> again, do your job. I mean, they asked you to bring the girl in, bring the girl in. It only made sense because they're both Nigerian, mm -hmm. you know? And it only made, you know, to me, it made better sense than actually bringing NECA in, you know, like, yeah. it just didn't, didn't even make sense. But, you know, that's when I, again, you, people let their feelings get in their way, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't know, people are saying she didn't want another Nigerian woman, she wanted to be the only Nigerian or whatever. Yay. I don't know that to be true, but I, I did think that um, there was some issue there, mm -hmm. you know, clearly, and it was a definite red flag. NECA mentioned how both their husbands had went to college together. Like, it seems like there had been some kind of connection. Do you think, Sharice, that I know NECA was on your podcast, so you're close yeah. to her, and we really enjoyed NECA on this past season. Do you think that NECA and Wendy, that ship has sailed, they'll ever have some any kind of friendship? I think it's sailed. Mm. I really do. That's what it was giving. I think the hard part also becomes, like, from a viewer standpoint, because we often have to be the viewer. As a viewer, and you're here in America, so as an American that totally doesn't know anything about the stuff that they're doing yeah. with the witches or whatever, all you hear is this woman, new woman, coming on the show calling somebody's mom a witch. Not that's the best look. Have. That's why they should not even have the whole storyline. Like, mm -hmm. Trash all of that. As true as it could have been, or whatever is going on with it, it just it just wasn't a topic that should have been had. Yeah, it feels like NECA never really even got like a fair shot or chance on the show to show yeah, herself. They actually cut out a lot of her personal stuff, oh. but she had a lot of story, you know, and it just seemed like that whole thing with her and Wendy was her season and that was it. You yeah, hear that you Bravo, know. they, you know, delete and take out storylines all the time. And you're like, wait, this happened on the show? Like, they could have easily right. taken it out. I bet so many, yeah. you know, Nigerian people were, like, really upset by it. And it was just really uncomfortable. Like, why did they have to make that such a big thing? And it kept on being brought up over and over again. I think, too, when you deal with cultural things that, again, we know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Like, production, knew nothing about it. I don't think you should touch stuff you know nothing about hate to see that this probably like affected you know her experience on potomac but we're fans neca we at sisters who watch really liked you <laughs> i like it when um you have professional people she's an attorney her yes, husband's a yes. doctor you know they actually bought a house in potomac <laughs> um <laughs> it's like got the dog trying to have a baby I mean, you got a package, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's disappointing. I, I mean, rewind. I liked when Wendy came initially. Yeah. It was like mm -hmm. degree over degree over degree, you know? And she had a husband and, and the family. And I'm like, yay, you know? Yes. And then the second season, I'm like, okay, where did that lady go? Mm -hmm. Why are we making <laughs> What happened? Who's the black man? degree the woman. <laughs> I even told her, I said, I thought you were going to be using words they were going to have to Google. That's what I was looking forward to. I know. Shelby um, and I feel the yeah. same way. Like, we loved Wendy her first season. We loved her. Right? We're like, yes, mm -hmm. educated. Right? Because Shelby and I, we're young professionals. So we seeing someone like mm -hmm. Wendy was really cool. But yeah, like, she, she has changed so much since the first season. So... Yeah. I'm not as much as of a fan now, but seeing NECA come in, I was like, okay, attorney, like I'm, I want to go to law school. So I was like, yes, NECA, we love it. 
Um, yeah, she just didn't get a fair shot, um, but she had so much potential. It's so important because we have a, a huge African following. Mm. Um, they used to love me before Wendy came. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so we have this following. And so it's like, okay, great. You know, and then Mecca came and I'm like, okay. Hey, yeah, I said, Housewives of a blue job. <laughs> <laughs> For our next question, mm -hmm. is it a green flag to defend your partner no matter what? You saw that with like Robin and Juan and even Candace and Chris. I think it's it's a green a green flag. You should defend your partner. Mm -hmm. By any means necessary. Yeah. And then you kick us behind when you get home. <laughs> but you probably <laughs> You defend him at all costs. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. So we did our review of the season. We made it to the end. So Sharice, was season eight of The Real Houses of Potomac a wait or a watch? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for it. <laughs> you heard it here. It's a wait from Sharice. I, I honestly agree. Like, I really love Potomac. I love the franchise. But this season was definitely a letdown. Um, and I will say, Sharice, every time you came on the season, you brought some of the best scenes, truly. Like, you were such yeah. a highlight for me. Um, Thank you. Yes, genuinely. Every time I was like, yes, like, Sharice is here. Um, and if you listened, we reviewed season seven a year ago. And we talked about how much we loved you. And we were like, bring Sharice back. But it just shows that you're giving them all this advice and they're not listening, you know? So it's like, yeah. what are we doing here, producers? So they just, yeah. there I needs even, to be some change. I, even, I did say I wouldn't mind working in production. Ooh. <laughs> <They ignore me. laughs> you have these producers that come in, they're from everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Nobody's from here. So, yeah, Sharice. Sharice has all the relationships and connections in the area. So... I can get you the access that your cast members can't. Um, I can give you some good storylines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nice. I mean, I think I personally would do better in production. I should have been in production in the first place because you have these people who are not from here producing it because they go to the next show and the next show. Mm. So they, they come like a couple weeks early and they're trying to put all this together, you know? And... It's a hard job for them to have. I think that you should have somebody on your team that's rooted in the area where you are. It is yeah. um, funny how we're all await on this one because I'm aligned. And fingers crossed, you know, either you become a producer, Sharice, or they just are able to bring Potomac back to its former glory. Do you have any advice for anyone considering joining reality TV? Because you've had, you know mixed feelings about it like what advice would you give someone actually i think reality tv is actually a great platform mm -hmm. like because it gives you an opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to do a lot of things um unfortunately for me i didn't get to do the things that i wanted to do with it because like i personally have like like i do a lot of charity work so in the realm of the world of charity i thought it was going to be a good platform like in my family a lot of my siblings have sickle cell. Mm. So I was hoping that I was going to be able to, you know, do stuff for sickle cell awareness and, you know, things that affect our community. At the end of last season, to do a gala, Ooh. like to put together, because I've done galas. And so it's like, you know, but I needed to, I can't put a gala together in three and a half months. I need, like, I need to start then, which was the end of the season. It, to put on a really good gala, you need a good year, you mm -hmm. know? So I, I was going to put it together. I said, like, I don't have to, I'll do all the work and somebody else would take credit. I just want it to look good. I want the show to look good. Mm -hmm. You know what the response was? Okay, Sharice, we'll get back to you. We're going in a meeting. Nothing. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> what are they doing? So like, I'm going to get mad at myself. Like, why do you keep Going to these people trying to help and get slapped in the face. Like, just be over it. Let it go. Crazy. That's shady. That is shady of them, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so 
as we talked about, there's been some cast shakeups. How do you feel about Candace leaving, Robin leaving? And can you, we've heard rumors about NECA leaving. Is that true? Or are you not sure if that's a real thing? I don't know. Oh, I've been seeing there are rumors that Kiana was promoted to a cast member and that there was like maybe a new housewife coming, Stacy. So who knows? I will be excited to see what happens. Yeah, I know. I, I know Stacy. Oh, OK. And if she was a housewife, do you think that would be a good addition? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we're about to find out oh. so what is next for Sharice we know you have conversations in the champagne room which we have been loving so far but what else are you looking forward to I say this too much and I need to stop I'm looking forward to bringing a relationship oh <laughs> I do believe it I'm not in yes one that I'm not in right now but um I I kind of miss that world mm. of being in that relationship. Like, um, I, you know, I've dated. Um, it's been kind of sucky. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm having, for some reason, like I'm feeling like it's about to change. Ooh, yes, it is. My dream is to do my own champagne line. Ooh, yeah. So. And I've been saying it for a long time, and I have not. Like, I've, I've connected with this uh, company, and we went through the process at first, and then things happen. Long story. But anyway, I kind of went on pause. I feel like a champagne line will be perfect for your pod, too. Drink your champagne yeah. while interviewing people. I love it. Yeah. Do each episode um, feature a different champagne. But... I have my own line. It'll be, <laughs> let's see if this tastes better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's good, but not as good. I was <laughs> literally thinking that while I was listening, I was like, if Sharice doesn't have her own champagne line, I hope it's on its way. So I'm so happy that you're working on it. And also we're believing for a wonderful relationship for yes. you. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. You know, Shelby and I, um, we feel you. It's hard out here, um, dating and everything. <laughs> yeah, are you like, how are you meeting people? Are you like on the apps? Are you like go trying to go through friends? Last person, I guess I'm still kind of dating. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so a whole roster. I met through another person because I say he he's in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um. So I met him actually through NECA's friend. Oh. So NECA has a dating app called something Africa. She was starting her dating app. She's gonna put me on her dating app. And so her girlfriend was like, "Sharice doesn't need a dating app." I said, "Yes, she does." And so then she's like, "I know two people that would love to date you." So she calls this one guy, and we've been talking ever since. Oh wow! Ooh. Yeah. He's a doctor. Ooh, okay. okay. So on to our what to watch segment. So here we talk about what we're currently watching and what's to come related to Potomac. So Sharice, what are things that you're enjoying these days? Like, are there any TV shows or movies that you're really loving? You know what? I am hooked on The Resident. Mm. Oh. On Netflix. Oh, I've heard of it's this. It's like Grey's Anatomy, but a little juicier. Mm -hmm. Um. The resident is very good. Yeah. Shelby, what is what else is coming up related to Bravo, Real Housewives? I know Sharice, you mentioned that they're filming right now, so that's I exciting. Know, uh, season nine. Of course, yes, the new season of Real Housewives of Potomac. Assuming it'll probably premiere like this winter, kind of like following the same kind of pattern, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Of course, you know, conversations in the champagne room with Sharice. We have to keep up with her podcast. New episodes drop weekly on Wednesdays, people. So make sure you're tuning in. So that's the end of our episode. We can't believe we're already here. Sharice, this was such an honor and pleasure to have you come chat with us. Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. 
please yes. tell our fans, our listeners, where they can find you and how they can support you. Well, of course, you can download Conversations in the Champagne Room. You can find it on all platforms. Um, and then, of course, I'm on Instagram, the number one, Sharice, C-H-A, two R's, I, two S's, E. I love, Sharice, how you tend to post like inspirational quotes in your story. So whenever I see those, I'm like, yes, that's the energy we need. <laughs> it's so funny because like I get some because I I'm looking at them all the time I get so many mm -hmm. and I'm like oh I like this and I'm posting I'm like oh my god I have to make myself stop because I'm like oh I like this one I'm like, <laughs> I like we need it. more positivity yeah and light yeah. and mm -hmm. I really liked your yeah. podcast because it was really inspirational and positive and we Shelby and I both really liked how you talked about your faith a lot and how you've been going to church. And I, that's also like really cool to hear you talk about that. All right. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And I'm going to keep listening to you guys. Oh, and thank you. All thank the best you. with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, if, if you enjoyed this episode of Sisters We Watch, please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, and go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, five stars. And go follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, we're there, and go support us. And go support Cherise on Conversations in the Champagne Room. Go listen to our podcast, too. Yes. Uh, we want to hear from y'all, so you can message us on social media, email us. We just are are so grateful for all of your support. Sisters Thanks, to everybody. Watch. Thank you. Sisters Bye. Watching. Watching. Everything. Watching.